in 2008, the movie Iron Man came out. And in the stinger, we heard Nick Fury ask us a question. Well, more of a statement. I'd like to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. Bum, 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 bum. No, sorry. In 2012, <laughs> Avengers, also known as Avengers Assemble to some, was released in which the Avengers secured a great victory against the villain Loki and his armies gained from a mysterious source revealed later to be Thanos, the Mad Titan. 2015, we saw the sequel, Avengers Age of Ultron. And we saw okay. Tony get a vision from Wanda Maximoff of the Earth with Thanos' forces, Jatari and others like it. Ascend, descending on our world. It's 2018. We've been waiting 10 years for this, my friends. My name is Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. And we are the Rambling Reviewers. And today is Avengers Infinity War! Yeah. Woo! Part 1. But that, I mean, whatever. The other one's not going to be called Part 2, I hear. They're going to make it a new title, but... Yeah, yo, Part um, 1 of a two-part story, though. Yep. So... So let's put it out. My the brain is still full of fuck. Yeah. Okay? my brain is still full this of is, fuck. I think it was great. Um, it was, it was such a contrast to Batman v Superman, which we just recently reviewed, which is supposed to be the big old get everyone together crossover film, and it sucked. And I can only assume the Justice League movie sucked even more, or just as much. It's I don't know. Yeah, this one had more characters her second than any other film I've ever seen. Yeah. And they managed to tell the story really efficiently so you could have all sorts of people having interesting interactions with each other and then we'd move on quickly to the next bit. Um, so it starts with... Oh, right. Um, so previously in Thor Ragnarok, Asgard got destroyed... And Thor and Loki and the Asgardians were on a ship headed towards Earth to um, find a new home. When suddenly they run into an even bigger ship, which looks like a ripoff of a Cylon base ship from the reboot. But, okay. And that's in the stinger of Thor Ragnarok. We cut to this movie and we pick up eh, about uh, what I can only assume is about half an hour later. Yeah. Um, half of all the people on the ship are dead. So that's fun. Nearly everyone, actually. There's like three people standing around. Thor, Loki, and Heimdall's not actually standing. Yeah. He is just barely hanging in there. And Thanos is there, along with his uh, children, lieutenant people. Same thing. They're called the children of Thanos, which, you know, I don't know. It sounds really egotistical to name a group after yourself. You know, he is Thanos, right? Yeah, but this version seems more humble. Well, that's true. I mean... Comparatively. Okay, yes. Original Thanos, one of his first actions with the Infinity Gauntlet uh, um, was to write his own name in the stars as a way of impressing death. Because, yeah. let us not forget, in the comics, death is an actual person. Yeah, and he wanted to impress her. Yeah. Didn't work out so well. Yeah, we won't tell you what he did first with the Infinity Gauntlet, in case you haven't read the comics. Well, I haven't read the comics, but, you know. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, is... well, what he does with it, he does later on in the film, and, you know, oh, let's, let's avoid right. discussing that yet. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so Thor is being all pissy. You killed all my friends and my family and it's my It's a perfectly people. reasonable reaction. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that he's upset. So Thor's upset, um... And Loki tries to talk to Thanos for a moment there, yeah. and freaking Hulk shows up. Um, yeah, the Loki manages to pull the. We have a Hulk line that yeah. Tony pulled back on him back in 2012's Avengers. And then the like one of the first things Thanos does on screen is to beat down the Hulk. Yeah, yeah. and he doesn't do it with the. In we're seeing, we're showing that he already has the Infinity Gauntlet, which we saw in the stinger of one of the films. I can't remember which one it was. Hmm. Ultron? Mm, maybe. I forgot. Maybe. I forget which one, which is why I didn't mention it. So, but we see that he already has an Infinity Stone on him. 
It's the Power Stone, right? Yep, the and Power Stone, which we last saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, in the care of the Nova Corps of Xandar. We later learned that, yeah, he visited Xandar. He took the Power Stone, and he slaughtered half of Xandar. Because Thanos. Yeah, so, turns out they were not uh, such a great defense force as we might have guessed. Yeah, but in their defense... No one's a great defense force against Thanos. Yeah. Thanos... Yeah, Thanos is, honest to God, I told Jimmy this in the cup, Sonic Sons, mm -hmm. uh, Marcus, Walter, whatever your <laughs> fucking name is, I don't fucking know. You can edit it out. Yeah, no, nah, nah, we're, too, we're too far into this gag. Anyways, so I was telling him on the car on the way back to his place, yeah, Thanos is legitimately the third most powerful character I've ever seen in comic books. Uh, uh, the, the two more powerful being Krona from DC and the Anti-Monitor also from DC although technically there are some sliding scales there you know sometimes a character is like oh I am more powerful than God and then they reverse time and bullshit but you know what you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm trying to say yeah. okay also technically Eternity which is the living embodiment of the Marvel Universe itself but does Eternity ever get around to doing much or does he just stand around and body very much things? cosmic stuff so I don't really know anything about yeah. it point is that um, Thanos, Thanos beats, beats up, down the Hulk, knocks him unconscious. Um, Heimdall manages to use his Rainbow Bridge powers, which I don't think he's ever shown having before. Well, he's the guy in charge of the Bifrost, so it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, but like, creating his own mini Bifrosts to teleport people around? I mean... Wouldn't that have been really useful back in Ragnarok when he was trying to transport people to safety, refugees and stuff? Oh, yeah. The ability to instantly teleport people. Yeah, okay, well... He... Send them off to Earth, like, maybe send himself off to go, like, okay, United States government, this, we're from Asgard, we're refugees, think shit is going bad here, we'll start sending people there. Yeah, that's true. I yeah. don't know, it was a last desperate act sort of thing. Yeah, I'm just Wait, saying... Wait, maybe, it... was, the power, was the power in the sword, maybe? The sword that unlocks the Bifrost? Yeah, but I thought he had the sword the whole time. Not during Ragnarok, though. Uh, What's her name got hold of it, didn't you? Oh, Hell? maybe. 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 Maybe that was it. 100% okay. sure. Anyway, so I was totally expecting, like, okay, now he's the part where he teleports away the important characters, being Thor and the Hulk. And he only gets the Hulk, actually. Um, and uh, then Loki tries again to trick Thanos, and... Here's one problem with Loki's character. I don't think he's ever successfully tricked people, really. No, he's tricked people a ton of times. No, but, like, he'll screw something up, and then we manage to deal with it pretty quickly. You know? Oh, okay. Like, we have a Hulk. Oh, well, I just beat him up. Oh, well, I pledged my loyalty to you. Aha! Oh, crap, he caught my knife, like, right next before I got to his throat. Um... Well, I'm the god of tricks, and I'm apparently not good at my job. <laughs> you know? I, I think it's not that he's not good at tricks. He just keeps doing them to the same people he just did them yeah, to. See. So they're on guard. Yeah. It's like, it's like say, the god of Rochambeau walking up to you and saying, Hi, I'm the god of Rochambeau. Why are you wearing a cup around me? <laughs> what? Rochambeau is a game where you kick each other in the balls. Oh. So wearing a cop. I did not know that meant at all. Okay, fine. <laughs> Point to his, Loki yeah. dies. <laughs> okay, personally, I'm saying this doesn't stick on the basis that this is like, what, the second or third time that he's pulled this shit? Yeah, um, honestly, that was, I, I, I was mixed feelings on that. Um, he's going to come back like, he's going to be even more popular with the fangirls because he sacrificed himself for his brother Thor. Yeah, I it's... know how fan fangirls think. I I lost a significant portion of my brain matter when I learned that. <laughs> how fangirls think? I yeah. see. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to do anything serious with Loki because his only thing is being a trickster. So if he ever seems to have a character development moment, you have to be like, well, did he actually develop, or is he just like pretending to? Or, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and they even remark in the film Thor's latest, like, you know, my brother's been dead before, but I think. Maybe this time it'll stick. And I think the intention is to make it stick, honestly. The problem is that this is not the first time Thor has thought his brother was dead before. No, but it's the first time it was so dramatically appropriate for him to stay dead. Because we got bigger fish to fry now. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, this is a character who has done this multiple times. It's not going to surprise me if he shows up in the next film. Yeah, I don't know. So that took some of the power away from him, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, so Heimdall only sent away uh, Hulk. Hulk to Earth, where he crashes, conveniently enough, right into the Sanctum Sanctorum of Dr. Stephen Strange. I guess, I, I assume that was intentional. Yeah, I guess it was. Heimdall wasn't. can see everything. I can probably see where the Sanctum Sanctorum is. Yeah, but is. he didn't see this coming, so I'm just... Well, he <laughs> doesn't see the future. He sees the present. Yeah, he, he should see, you know, the giant-ass <laughs> ship with the doom monsters on board that will slaughter half of his people. I'm just saying, that's the sort of thing that we pay you to do, Heimdall. <laughs> you are so fucking fired. And dead, sadly. And then he is immediately killed by one of Thanos' children, or Thanos himself. I, I, I don't really remember. It was a very dark scene. Physically dark, you mean? Visually yes, dark. visually dark scene. And, um, well, anyway. So, oh, well, so, so we lost... Actually, yeah, Heindel's actually the first guy to die. And of I'm, course, it's the black guy dies. I know, that came into my mind, too, and I was like, ah. Oh, well, technically, there was a bunch of white Asgardians who died Yeah, first, that's true. That's but he's, like, true. the first person we actually see. Well, no, 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 wait. We, well, we don't, didn't see the skin color of that guy that got speared through the chest while, while um, that guy. the mouth of Sauron or whatever the fuck that guy's name was. <laughs> was yeah. making his big grand speech. Oh, yeah, that guy who speaks with that high-pitched voice. Yeah, uh, Douchey McDouchebag. Okay, fine. No, he's not Douchey McDouchebag, but um, we will need the character list because there are a fuck ton of oh, characters. Oh, Ebony Maw, apparently. Ebony Maw. Well, that is a terrible name. Uh, Ebony Maw. That just says, just... I need a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I am in desperate need of a dentist. All right, so... um. Thor does a thing. Wait, how does Thor get out of this one? He does. Oh no, that's right. Yeah, he, he, they, Thanos leaves him. the thing and he like nukes the ship as he leaves. And then um, he's just floating there. Uh, then we go back to Earth and where we see Bruce Banner is going. Oh, he's coming. Thanos is coming. Mm. Um, so <laughs> Stephen Strange contacts Tony Stark, who in Spider-Man: Homecoming apparently got back together with Pepper Potts. Yeah. And they're scheduled to get married now. Yeah. Uh, Tony has a new thingy in the middle of his chest, which I'm like, isn't that kind of backsliding on your character development? Well, they explain this new thing is just the suit in nano form. Yeah, still. I don't know. You gotta have that visual in there somewhere. I know it was a neat character thing that he got rid of the implanted arc reactor, but at the same point, comics need their visuals. We need Iron Man to have a thing in his chest. That's a thing he normally has. Yeah, why not have it be like a big, ugly wristwatch? He could, I don't know. He could, but they decided they like this better. Yeah. There are people who are pissed off that that thing is not a circle. Like, you know, people like their iconography. I like the triangle better. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It has pointy bits. You could theoretically hurt someone with it. <laughs> yes. Well, then I'm out of nanites. I, I guess I could hit you with this. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Um, so he's talking with Pepper, uh, and then Stephen Strange interrupts and says, hey, I need your help. So they go back to the Centaurum and basically discuss the basic idea of these uh, Infinity, Infinity Stones, Stones and what the trouble is and everything. Mm -hmm. Thanos gets all six. He can wipe out half the universe, which turns out to be not a metaphor. He literally wants to wipe out exactly 50% of the universe. Yeah. It's like his big philosophy. Yeah, you think that uh, when you realize or hear the reason for it, we have some questions we about We have some this. questions about this. But, Even though we do like him as a villain overall. So oh my god, yeah. this one made Thanos amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, at least good. It made him yeah, an, it, it least... made an interesting character out of him when so many Marvel movies have been like, the bad guy's bad, very vaguely. Remember like that Ronin the Accuser guy, the Dark World? Yeah. And he was like, doing bad shit for some reason, I could barely tell why. Okay, actually, I do know that. Uh, he was a soldier because there was a war between the Nova Corps and the Kree, and he was unhappy that the Kree signed a treaty with the Nova Corps, yeah. so he was basically going rogue to go and try to kill off more Kree because he was butthurt that the the war didn't end with uh, Xandar getting its ass turned to gravel. And somehow this led to the plot with the once every five thousand year summony thing that was gonna kill off everybody. What? Which movie are we talking about? <laughs> that was. Not what you were talking about. No. It was Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Oh, that's right. That's right. Ronan the Accuser okay, that's was true. the Kree. That's right. W what movie are you? I was drifting of? off to Thor: The Dark World. 
Because we were just talking about four. Okay, um, yeah, oh, okay, uh, no. Point no, is, not what, okay. the Ronin was not memorable enough for me to separate which movie he was in. Okay, <laughs> I will grant you that, but his motivations were explained. Okay, fine. But they weren't explored. For the Dark World was just dumb. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, then, um, uh, his very stupid... Um, let's see. What, what's his name again? Uh, Thanos. Thanos is very stupidly shaped donut chips. Descend I, over New York with... I liked him for being unique. I mean, it would have been super easy to do something that's vaguely aerodynamic with engines on the back like every other ship ever. And this is more like he's using a totally different type of technology. It's shaped like a circle for some reason. It looks cool. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I was kind of assuming that that would be some sort of Stargate that his forces would pile on through. Yeah. You know, leading up to the big mid-air battle that's in every Marvel movie. By the way, this one does not have a big mid-air battle. Yeah, I was about to say. This is uh, different. Yeah. So they, they discuss all this for all of, like, two minutes before, crap, Thanos is already here. And you're like, okay, this guy's uh, really proactive. I like this sort of villain. He is, he is bothering to attack everybody. Except it's not him. Well, it's, it's not him children. Yeah. It's um, uh, what it would look like if Killer Croc was cosplaying as a 90s gritty reincarnation of Ruby Rose... Yeah, I guess. Which, which he's uh, got basically, a, yeah, he's got a scythe. Yeah. But it looks like a really crappy scythe made out of, like, scavenged metal. Oh, yeah. More. I mean, it works, but yeah. at the same time, you gotta feel crap. You gotta feel like crap knowing that Earth technology is just, like, so crap that this scythe made out of garbage in space that they just welded together from nothing is capable of just tearing through buildings. They're good at that. Uh, so Ebony Maw and Evil Hulk... Uh, <laughs> um, I thought no, of him that way. He was big and green. Yeah. Okay. Evil, evil Scythe Hulk. Yeah. Uh, decide to engage the Avengers, except well, only mostly they're here to one go. Yeah, they want to go. Well, except zero. They really only care about Stephen Strange. He was never technically an Avenger in this continuity. Yeah, he was never. Not even technically. He was never an Avenger in this continuity. That's true. So okay, they want Stephen Strange because, as was revealed in the Doctor Strange movie. The Eye of Agamotto in this continuity is a... The in Time Stone. The yeah. Time Stone. Okay, so... Uh, so they fight, and they fight, and they fight, and they fight. And so the Maw and, reveals... Uh, and part of what's going on there is uh, Tony says to uh, Bruce, can you please turn Hulk? And he tries hulking himself up, and eventually he goes like halfway Hulk, and the Hulk form yells no, and goes back to Bruce Banner form. For and no I, reason that is ever explained in this film, we're really hoping that he explains it in the no, second I, I, one. I, I think I get it from the first viewing, and I think it's a really interesting concept. The Hulk is actually scared for once in his life. The first thing that happens in this movie is he tries to beat up Thanos, and Thanos kicks the crap out of him. So now, ironically, it's the Hulk that's the scaredy cat of the two forms, and Bruce Banner, who's uh, comparatively more courageous. I was like, that's interesting. I like hmm. that. Also, the Hulk, so it's equally likely that, shut the fuck up, Bruce. I want to sleep. I guess. Well, I, I like the idea that he's actually afraid, because it boosts Thanos as a villain. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, Tony fights the guys as best he can. This guy's basically a super telepath and, like, lifts things easily. Yeah, I noticed he was always somebody lifting metal. I thought maybe he had magneto powers. So remember, just coincidence, he kept doing that. Yeah, he, he lifted up like, okay, well, I guess there could have been metal there. Yeah. Huh. Maybe he does have metal powers. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, they had an awesome fight scene. This well, whole movie is lots of awesome city, fight scenes. city, so there, there, there's lots of metal yeah, there. Yeah. So, huh. Eventually, he captures uh, Doctor Strange and takes him over the ship. And in the meantime, Spider-Man's become aware of all this. Uh, it has to like We're jump out of a bus. The characters, yeah, I that's swear right. to God, because there's just so much stuff that's going exactly, on. But that's exactly what the plot calls for. It's exactly what people are looking for. So he shows up and tries to help. And eventually, uh, both of them wind up on the donut ship heading to Titan, a planet it, called Titan. Yeah. In, in this continuity, it's not clear if it's the Saturn's moon of Titan or oh, some I, other. I assumed planet. it was a totally different solar system from Titan, because you know, otherwise, you think you would have noticed at some point the alien spaceships lying around. Yeah, you'd think we would have noticed a force field over Wakanda or magic existing. Yeah, people in this universe are not observant. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, I, I assumed it was a far distant planet. 
I mean, sometimes it's it depends on where how it's portrayed in the comic. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. I'm not huh. super sure of that. Point is, they're on the ship bound for Titan, and uh, to just follow that plot line for a moment, um, Tony finds or Peter finds Tony there, and they team up to rescue Doctor Strange, and they end up blowing a hole in the side of the ship to like have a explosive decompression thing and that's and, pretty cool uh black maw or whatever his name is ebony maw ebony maw it gets sucked out into space which okay that, that i was not expecting that to be the way that they killed him off yeah that was cool i was expecting impalement honestly they seem to do impalement a lot in the marvel universe yeah it's visually appealing yeah um meanwhile back on earth um bruce banner and actually just bruce banner has <laughs> gone to the avengers and he's like Hey guys, Thanos is coming, and then he explains that briefly. And then he goes, "Oh, we can't find Vision because he turned off his tracking beacon two weeks ago, because he was going oh, out." Well, on Tony a, mentioned that earlier. Yeah, he's going out on a date with uh, Wanda, and they're in Scotland for some reason, probably on a date. And yeah. they're like, like "Maybe we should retire and go somewhere nice and just live together because we're so in love with each other." And I'm sure this plot line won't get totally derailed by the end of the story. It wasn't derailed, it was, they're still in love by the end of the story. Yeah, but, you know, this won't end horribly for everyone uh, involved. Yeah, no, of okay, course that's not. better. So, yeah, they were all like, uh, maybe, you know, we could change the way we do things. And then suddenly, Thanos' people show up. You're like, dang, this guy is everywhere. Kudos to you, Mr. Villain. You bothered to hit the enemy on multiple fronts. Yes, thank you for being <laughs> fucking intelligent. Yeah. Which is more than what we can say for the Wakandans. And no, this isn't just my hate boner for Wakanda. We'll, we'll get to that later. But, and then the outlaw Avengers show up. Conveniently just in time to save the day. Which includes, um... Black Widow, Captain America, um... Black Widow, Captain America... Falcon? Falcon. Was there a fourth guy? Not that I remember. Okay, yeah. Also, Black Widow dyed her hair blonde for some reason. Yeah. I mean, it's not the weirdest thing, but especially since this is a Marvel movie, but it just brings to mind how Beverly Crusher's actress in Star Trek The Next Generation dyed her hair blonde for uh, Star Trek First Contact, and just oh. no one commented on it. Oh. Yeah, well, part of what they're doing is apparently it's been two years since the previous... I mean, I guess it's good for a disguise, but, yeah, you know, it's I never mean, mentioned. Kind of or... No, I didn't have time. Like... And what, what is a big missed moment is that after that, the Avengers go to, well, the outcast Avengers take Wanda and the Vision to Avengers headquarters, where War Machine is... Yeah, what's his name? Uh, War Machine is talking to General Thunderbolt Ross. By a hologram. Yeah, because this was totally necessary to do via hologram. We couldn't just have this projected on a wall, which would be much more cost effective. You know, it's the future. They have holograms everywhere. Yeah, I know. It's just the, there's there has to be a line between what is what is cool and what is actually practical. I'm just saying that this holographic system had to have cost like what thousands, millions of dollars. The U.S. government wastes money again. Yay. Okay, let's be fair. It's probably Tony Stark wasting. You money. Tony Stark wastes money again. Yeah, that would make perfect sense. Like you could buy like an old TV from like you know probably grab an old TV out of a junkyard and spruce that up. Yeah. I'm just saying, oh there'd have to be, there would be people looking over the Avengers finances if it's working for the U, alongside the U.S. government. Someone would go, huh, okay, so I can understand importing all these, all this Nordic food for Thor, <laughs> but why do you have $16.5 million on a hologram system when we gave you a TV? You know, speaking of TVs and pointless holograms, in real life, CNN is a pointless hologram system. And, like we said, it's pointless. Right, but it happened in real life, so realistic. <laughs> uh, just because it's realistic doesn't make it not dumb. Okay, so dumb, realistic things happen. And anyway... So, anyways... <laughs> Thunderbolt Ross is like... Oh, he, he sees um, the outcast Avengers show up, and he's like... Arrest them! And so, War Machine goes, okay. Uh, okay, and then he, he just can cancels the call. Yeah. Got other things to do, guys. So, okay. So, um, then they go, you oh. Know, this actually could have been an interesting thing if somehow, and it would have been too much to put it all in one story, but if they were really at Civil War during Thanos' attack, 
and like the reason things go south is because they weren't working well enough together because dang it they were fighting and the lesson on not doing that hmm. anyway anywho uh so they go yeah we have problems wait what, what did they discuss there i can't infinity remember. stones i think for the third time yeah they discussed infinity which is stones. actually is okay that they repeat it that often because you need to like know the rules of the thing we're dealing with here when there's so much going around yeah so oh and here's the big missed moment uh Nata is it natasha or yeah natalie uh, uh i thought it was natasha yeah natasha aka black widow and bruce banner meet again for the first time since uh age of ultron which considering they had a thing then you'd think would be like a bit more of a conversation piece Maybe like a scene or two of them yeah. going, you know, I missed you, where were you, uh, what's been going on since then. Yeah. Could have used Why that. do you have blonde hair? <laughs> you know, something. They had good character dynamic in that film. I mean, they made a moment out of it. They definitely did. And then it was just, all right, but we'd have to focus now because Thanos. So. Yeah, I know. It's just... Yeah, it'd be nice if they could... If there could be an easily be a deleted scene in there. Uh, meanwhile, in space, uh, the Guardians of the Uni Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy, not Guardians of the Universe, because this isn't Green Lantern. Nope. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are responding to a distress call in the hopes of A, being nice, and B, getting some money out of this. Yeah. And they find themselves at the wreckage of the Asgardian ship, where Thor conveniently slams right into their windshield, and he's alive enough to be able to respond and do things. Yay, he's a god. Um, and they immediately i love how efficient this all is they set up this thing um this like masculinity contest between quill and and thor and quill at one point like starts making his voice deeper to sound cool and he's like thor's like you're copying me no you're copying me you're talking <laughs> and it's just like silly and totally in character and yeah efficiently done yeah very efficiently done Although it does lead to Thor thinking that Rocket Raccoon is the leader of the Guardians. <laughs> yeah. And they take a scout ship that apparently the Milano has. Yeah. Hey, wait, what happened to the big, awesome Ravager f flagship that they had at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2? I don't know. It's been two years. It got blown up or something. Yeah, you know, I, I'd say that that's not good storytelling. But then again, this is the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. I would say that is entirely a character yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that thing exploded. Rocket was messing with the engines one day, and then stuff happened. What happened? To, what happened to that guy that that was like viewed uh, Yondu yeah. as a father figure and was practicing with the arrow? What happened oh, to yeah. him? Maybe... Darn it! I miss him. I liked that guy. Yeah, he's probably hanging out with other Ravagers now something and by the way ant-man's under house arrest and as is hawkeye so they're not hawkeye. in this film yeah just not enough room guys you know. yeah uh let's see so thor yeah takes the thor and rocket and groot all take the scout ship out to that planet that's hard to pronounce yeah it's like a it's vana near manana manana da 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 Nidavellir. It's it, it's Nordic. It's, 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 it's fucking Nordic. Okay, so we go to Nidavellir so we can forge himself a new weapon with which to kill Thanos. And I was like, okay, so this is cool because Thor had lost his hammer before. Yeah, we need and him to like, have we need something. to have a thing, and all right, he's gonna make it, and they make a big deal out of how hard they had to work to make this thing work. Because Thanos had been there previously. And, and it got... turns out that these guys are the guys he got the actual Infinity Gauntlet from. Yeah. Which I thought was actually setting up for something where, you know, it turns out, oh, but I made a weak, forged a weakness into the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, no. Or something. Couldn't do that. Oh, and the, the name of the dwarf, uh, the guy who plays the dwarf, the dwarf, by the way, who is twice the size of Hagrid from Harry Potter, it's Peter Dinklage, a.k.a. Professional Midget. Yes, he's like an little person. Little person, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, yeah, um, he is an actual dwarf, if that term is okay. I don't know how the terms work. Point is, it's interesting that they didn't just make a large guy, but they gave him unusual proportions and stuff, which makes him feel, you well, know, like something more different than a yeah. normal person. Yeah. God, we're gonna, you know, just forget this guy. <laughs> forget this guy. We're moving on. Uh, we're gonna get. A, 
criticized by who watches the show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> seriously. Like, comment, subscribe, people, to hear more potentially awkward <laughs> midget <laughs> word wronging. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Uh, meanwhile, back on Earth, because this play, this takes like 70 different steps to get to anywhere. Yeah, well, that makes sense. But, I mean, it makes sense when you're watching it, but just, god damn. Either man. Us just oh, wait, no, no, no. Meanwhile, at Nowhere, a.k.a. the severed head of a celestial in the Marvel Universe, where we visited in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie uh, to visit the Collector. Mm. Um, and he's got one of the stones. Or we think he does. Uh, it turns out all the lights are off, and the Guardians, meaning uh, Drax... Mantis? Yeah. Mantis. Quill and Gamora. Quill and Gamora. But before they get there, Gamora says, you have to promise to kill me, Quill, in case he ever captures me. Because she knows the location of the Soul Stone. I mean, she doesn't say it in that scene, but it was obvious that was the only thing she could possibly be talking about. Yeah. So we am going to make sure he never finds out the location of that Soul Stone. Exactly. Well, guess what happens in the very next scene? <laughs> well, what happens is uh, Thanos is a pro- trying to get the Collector to tell him where the other stone that the collector has the reality gem the reality that's right yeah he had the reality gem which Um, was given to the collector at the end of thor the dark world that's right i remember that now it's such a forgettable movie (laughs) yeah oh by the way he got the um uh, the tesseract stone back at the beginning of the movie he took it from loki that's right yeah so, yeah, at that point he has the space stone and the power stone. Uh, which is how he uses the space stone to warp away. Yep. Uh, anyways. So, they get in there. They have to stop Drax from tear- trying to tear Thanos a new one. But that actually just alerts Thanos to the fact that they're there. Although he knew they were there because it turns out this whole thing is a trap to get Gamora. Yeah. And he was using the reality stone to cloud everyone's vision because nowhere is on fire. Yeah. Everything in it is on fire. Yeah. For a little while there, I was wondering what the rules are of the reality gem. Like, does it just, if it does literally everything, does it just, you know, better than, is it like a I, genie? I, I, and then I realized, okay, so he warps things in Thanos' vicinity, but then when he leaves the vicinity, things go back to normal. Uh, yeah. So when he, like... You know, murders Drax apparently. And once he leaves this thing, like, oh, Drax is fine again. Never mind. Yeah, he, yeah. It's, but he it's, does successfully kidnap Gamora. Yeah, and when Peter tries, to, there's like this scene that's like at least a minute and a half long of him pointing his gun. Of it Peter. was a good scene. It was a good scene. It's just that I figured after this went on for more than ten seconds, okay, he's gonna get away. He's not gonna kill. He's not gonna be able to kill Gamora. He can pull the trigger, but Thanos will pull some bullshit because he's had so much time to prepare at this point. Mm. And he turns out right because uh, it makes Peter's guns fire bubbles. Thanos does that a lot with guns in this movie. He just turns things to bubbles. The first thing on his mind, I suppose. Really? He doesn't have to be creative about it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so then, um, you know, he warps away with Gamora to his home space station yeah for you know for a while there they're talking about this thing called titan i thought that was the name of his ship and then we went to the planet titan and i was like oh okay and the weird part about this is we see his home planet later and it looks great looks Wait. totally normal and fine what are you talking about he went to titan and it was all like a piece of crap yeah but then like it's later he goes somewhere wait later at the very end of the movie yeah that's when he's got all six stones at that oh, point he i think fixed it. yeah, yeah he, he fixed it never mind we're good so eventually, they uh, Thanos and Gamora arrive, but before that, we see a flashback from Gamora's point of view about how she was adopted by Thanos, and it's weird because Thanos is really a person here. Yeah, he's a person throughout the movie, actually, and they may you know make it more and more clear as you go. He is somehow able to massacre half the population of her home planet. While still treating Gamora herself as being interesting and he adopts her as a daughter and wants to make her into a great fighter and all this. Um, also, speaking of daughters, by the way, the when he takes Gamora, adult Gamora, to his spaceship, 
he's got Nebula there, and he's torturing her until Gamora reveals the location of the Soul Stone, which is on a planet called Vormir. Yeah, okay. Minor problem with this scene. Gamora knows that Thanos is going to murder half of the universe as soon as he gets his hands on the stones. He, She knows that him getting any more power is what is considered in most galactic, le- galactic lexicons bad. <laughs> Very bad. Instead of, I don't know, continuing to say nothing because what is the life of one person as compared to half of the universe? It's not a hard math problem. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's hard hearing your sister, you know, being Getting tortured. tortured. Definitely. But there's a, but she's going to die anyways if Thanos gets his way. There's a 50-50 chance, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, like, when that was happening, they, they were making it pretty intense, but I was just thinking to myself, well, there's only one way this scene could go, right? Like, obviously, for plot purposes, Thanos has to get his hands on more stones, uh, so she's going to break you know, down. Or, Gamora could leap at Nebula and slit her own throat on one of the sharp pointy bits of, of Nebula. That would be interesting, but I didn't think they were going to do that. And they didn't do that, so there you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. So, in the... He takes... I'm just sticking with this plot line for now because yeah. it's easier than going. And then they... I forget which plot line we're supposed to go to next. Yeah. They go to planet... Bormir. Bormir. Uh, Voromir, uh, wasn't that the guy who died in, in Fellowship of the Ring? Ah, uh, that's Boromir with a B. Boo. <laughs> and we get the character no one ever expected to show up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe ever again. Because Thanos is greeted by the Guardian of the Soul Stone, and it's the Red Skull from Captain America the First Avenger. Woo. I'm not even kidding. And then when I first saw him, I was like, wait, Darth Maul? I mean, technically <laughs> they are both owned by Disney. Yeah, I know. That, that'd be really weird. Darth Maul shows up. <laughs> it's just like, well, I'm owned by Disney now, so. Yeah. 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 But no, the Red Skull no. explains that he had previously acquired an Infinity Stone. Which we saw in Captain America First Avenger. And he says it rejected him, and I forget how that happened. Uh, basically, he tried just, to grab it, and then, like. It just zapped him? Yeah, it zapped him into, it showed the Bifrost temp briefly huh. and then it sucked him into a spatial rift or some bullshit and apparently it just made him the guardian of the soul stone and his job is to stand around here and explain crap to people yeah but it was pretty spooky so good for yeah you. <laughs> nice return of a character that we thought dead one of the things criticized in the marvel cinematic universe is that they kill off their villains way too easily and quickly huh. now some of them do but for some reason this scene coupled with another few made me think that thanos was actually obadiah stain what? Then what? Resurrected Obadiah Stane? Yeah. How did Obadiah Stane get resurrected? Well, he was he was that guy from uh, the Iron Man movie. Well, I know he was that guy. I'm saying if you're going to propose this as a plot connection, how did that work logically? Well, he fell into the arc reactor, which was later stated to be based on Tony, um, Tony Stark's dad's analysis and understanding of the energies of the tesseract which is revealed ah. to be the space stone ah. now if now space is kind of like space time are the same thing because science yeah but the fourth dimension he could have been taken back in time to wow. to titan where he could have received gene therapy and other things we saw that the titan people were technologically advanced they could have transformed a human into a hybridization of themselves and him i mean that's interesting that would explain why he knew tony's name later on i assumed he knew tony's name because he was upset about his troops getting nuked remember that part yeah but like tony was the guy who hand delivered the nuke and he was probably like screw you that guy someone look up his name yeah so i thought that this was obadiah stain who had adopted a new philosophy um, before it was just pure and simple greed, but he grew beyond that. But he's still mentally unstable enough to consider murdering people. Yeah, lots and lots Also, of he kind of has the same physique as Obadiah Stane. Yeah, vaguely. Yeah. Vaguely, yeah. I mean, but there could be, like, changes over time, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Wow. It's really weird. So, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. The arc reactor is based off of the space stone, not the time stone. I mean, technically, you can morph them into one, but... yeah. 
Okay, whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, but that was my thought process for a little while before I realized that that would be a little on the convoluted side. Yeah, I don't think they're doing that. Um, but then again, so is the in- an Infinity Stone transporting a Nazi supervillain from 1940- from the 1940s over into this random-ass planet to guard a random-ass stone. Yeah. I mean, the Infinity Stones, like the, the Mind Stone... Yeah. Ha- has been implied to be conscious as part of like Jarvis's thing. Yeah. But like none of the others have shown to be sentient. No, they haven't. Hmm. So. Well, uh, maybe they're a little bit sometimes. Anyways, Point is, they get to Vormir and. Um, they meet the Red Skull, which again is a thing that happens. I am not making this up. Yeah. Um, and he explains that in order to get the Soul Stone. You have to sacrifice the life of someone you love. I was like, all right, this is interesting. It's not all just like slaughtering people and taking their stuff. There's like a personal, emotional de- so, element here. And Gamora's like, ha! You're clearly not going to win now because which there's is no one in the galaxy that you love. Which, as soon as she starts speaking, I'm like, you just killed yourself, you stupid bitch. <laughs> wow. Why are you giving him more motivation to kill you? Well, actually, the, 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 if the whole idea is you have to sacrifice someone you love, giving him motivation to kill you... May very well make him not love you as much. You know what I'm saying? If you're mocking someone... You have a tiny penis! <laughs> so tiny! Is that why you want the Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> it's like Viagra for you? What? Okay. Uh, am I not being loved by you yet? <laughs> you smell! Point Daughter, is, this is actually are... a touching scene. Yeah, despite what I said. Yes. Yeah, I really should have Where he, game, like, you know. is... is you know, crying over the idea of losing her, and she's like surprised that he actually has feelings. And I'm like, wow, they're portraying a villain actually having feelings for yeah, not just does, his kin, but his kin who, that has already rejected him. The guy who plays Thanos really knocks it out of the okay, maybe not knocks it out of the park, but he, he does, does a really job. good job. Yeah, uh, and so did Thor in a conversation we skipped between him and Rocket. Well, we're gonna get to that plot line. Well, already, I'm just we already, oh, already right. passed on that. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, he's where. Uh, Rocket manages to like give this conversation tries talking to Thor Thor is like between barely concealed tears and false bravado it's it's really yeah, good yeah that was well done mm-hmm. um, and he remarked on all the people he'd lost and, and he said that it would give him a lot of motivation to go kill Thanos and then Rocket's like well what if you lose and he's like well then i i have nothing left to lose myself and they're like wow yeah thor's coming from an interesting place here and rocket walks away saying i could i could lose some more stuff <laughs> i've got stuff to lose yeah um anyway so so thanos throws, throws him, gamora to her death and she dies and then thanos gets to the soul stone and puts it in the gauntlet meaning that at this point he has four of the six wow yeah any hope of the heroes managing to get their hands on the other half of the stones and being able to take command of them to fight him they just died at that moment kind of like gamora did Ugh. yeah that was tasteless <laughs> i apologize i don't know what is wrong with me today okay okay i'm just not being the good person here okay back on earth um they... uh they're talking to the vision and say look vision you've got the mind stone in your skull and vision says you know what let's just blow up my skull including the mind stone blow up the mind stone which Apparently, so, Wanda can do that. Yeah, because her powers were gained by exposure to the Mind Stone. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Which, to me, is like, hey, guys, um, aren't these things like concentrated singularities from before the universe? Wouldn't A, destroying them, you know, release, be bad in that it would release such a massive amount of energy that it would basically rip the universe a new asshole? I don't know. I mean, you can just... Apparently not. Apparently not. I mean, like, well, in practical terms, you can destroy a nuke, for instance, without nuking it. In fact, that's the default. If you, like, just hit a nuke with a baseball bat, it wouldn't automatically go into actual nuke mode. I'm just saying that these things are repositories of energy, and you're going to force-feed it energy until it breaks. Yeah. That seems like the kind of thing that's not going to end well. Yeah, it might not. Might. Um, Yeah. Well, so the he says, Wanda, please do it, and she says no, and then they discuss an alternate option where they can go to Wakanda and get, what's her name, Black Panther's sister, 
to do fancy stuff to eventually extract the stone without killing Vision. Because the... Um what's his name bruce banner says oh you know vision's not just the stone he does all these different layers to him yeah he doesn't say it's like an onion but it's implied <laughs> yes uh so they go to wakanda goody wakanda uh, i'm so glad we get to see these pricks again for those of you who didn't see our black panther review stop watching immediately and go watch my black panther review. basically sith king hates them for not showing up during world events to help people when like the whole world was in jeopardy I, i'm sorry but like i'm sorry you have flying machine you have like anti-gravity technology bulletproof shields energy things that <laughs> are fitting in cloth Somehow. How many lives would that have saved during the invasion of New York? Plenty of lives. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just, just saying, you know. <sighs> so they go to Wakanda. Uh, they're doing this thing, and then Thanos shows up, or his troops show up anyway. Uh, uh, and they can't immediately crash through the shield. Okay, but... they la- they like orbitally drop a bunch of shit uh, next to the shield, and these troops start throwing themselves at the shield. And remember how I said I hate the Wakanda because Wakandans because they're idiots in this movie? Yeah, they're idiots in this movie. Okay, so it looks like they're throwing themselves against the shield. There's no indication that the shield is failing in any way. What are you talking about? There were like a dozen guys got through at that point. Oh, well, yes, but like... So yeah, the whole shield hasn't failed, yeah. Yeah, and it looks like they, we don't hear any... We don't see any shot of, like, the rea- Wakandan reactor room going, It's gonna blow! Captain, we don't have the power to keep it going! Because apparently uh, Wakandans are Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we don't he- hear anything like... They're trickling... The bad guys are trickling through. Mm. But given that these things look like xenomorphs mixed with the brood from canon Marvel... I'm okay with only facing a few of them at the at a time, since most of them aren't going to you know. Since most of them aren't getting through, we can handle them easily. But then they see, oh, they're circling around the shield to other sides where we might not get to them. Uh, here's a thought: maybe like have some of those flyers track them. Have you, this cannot be your entire army at this one spot. Yeah, honestly, the army apparently has like a hundred people in it, maybe two hundred. Yeah, maybe have some of those guys set up shop around the city. That would give us these really cool scenes of like fighting in the streets of the, the army and the guard fighting the monsters in the streets. I mean, they'd still be comparatively very few monsters, but still, it would give us something other than what they do, which is well. The only option to prevent them from getting in is to let them get in. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, and get this. They don't do this knowing that they have artillery ready to bombard <laughs> yeah. this area, knowing that it's a kill zone. They don't do this with guns raised. No, no, no. Their option is to let the numerically superior force come in through a very thin area, turn off their protective force field cloaks... <laughs> grab pointy sticks and charge at them. For the record, this is like what you would do if you were at the Battle of Thermopylae, except that you didn't have the shields or the tactics or the strategy or anything and were just a bunch of idiots. <laughs> you have guns. You have projectile weapons and energy weapons, but you're going to engage these things that Thanos, a guy who loves death, these things are so eager to kill, they were literally incinerating themselves, jumping through the force field. Yeah. And your bet is you're going to go fight these alien things with pointy sticks. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't, don't you know, set up kill boxes. Don't use artillery to lower their numbers and keep bombarding them as they go through this narrow area. Don't um, I mean, use they, air support. They which had war you machine have. air support. They oh are. yeah, they had war machine. Where were the rest of their planes? Yeah. Remember we saw those in uh, the Black, Black Panther? Panther movie? Yeah, what happened in between that? That was like two years ago in universe time. Did they get rid of the air force? <laughs> okay, so yeah. no air support. But don't worry, we have guys in a ragged, un- unsustainable line randomly chanting you know various african phrases with sticks <laughs> don't worry guys we got this uh, I know. my god 
Uh, when I can see the problems in your fucking military strategy, and my claim to fame as a military tactician is playing Command and Fucking Conquer. <laughs> and I would know to do this. <laughs> I have done that. Yeah, I know. It's a prime case of what we call Hollywood tactics. Um, what they were... Obviously, from a story perspective, they wanted all this immediate hand-to-hand combat stuff because it looks cool. I'm just imagining what it would be like visually if they opened up the narrow kill zone and they have like all these howitzers just pointed right at that thing and all the dudes just keep dying and all the warriors just standing there and the guys are like, you know, manning the turrets and all everyone else is just like milling about while the zergs just keep getting killed and they form like a whole just giant pile of a thousand dead zerglings and you're like, well, I'll just keep doing that, King. It seems to be working. Yep, this, okay. this seems to be working really well. Why don't we just do this for all of our invasions? Yeah, you know what uh, would have been easier uh, is if the the Thanos, children of Thanos people that were there had some special weapon that could take out a chunk of the shield. You know, like an EMP thing that hits in a narrow slice. And, and they, they established that they had these things, they just couldn't get to the field in time. Yeah, 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 the thing was charging up or whatever. So a few guys are milling through, and then, like, it's at full charge, and then, bzz, and there's, like, oh, crap, there's a hole in the shield. And now the guys are running at us, and now we have to resort to hand-to-hand because we didn't plan on this. That'd be better. That, that would be better. That would be so yeah. much better. And the stated reason is we, we're trying to force everyone to attack from one direction so they don't circle around back. And among the other problems you mentioned... Uh, nothing in their new plan prevents the enemy from circling around back. I'm sure this will be, or should be, in the How It Should Have Ended video. Be like, alright, we'll stop them from circling. Open the shield. And these guys come through the shield. Meanwhile, the other guys that were circling continue to circle, because no one is stopping them. And they're like, oh, they just completed the circuit and now are coming in through the back. Like, like they were they... planning to do anyway. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> God damn it, people! This is so. Just... It was it was an epic battle scene, but yeah, it was based on just terrible their, tactics. I guess their plan is that these things are too animalistic to consider, you know. And I would be, I could, I could buy that if they didn't have a commander, right? If these are really just zerglings coming out of the ground because it's eating season or something, then fine. Maybe they won't plan on shit. They really will just go animalistic. But they have someone in charge with spaceships. You think that someone in charge would be like? Over here, click. <laughs> you know what I was really hoping for? Yeah. I was hoping to see the Chitari again. Like, have those giant flying whale things batter. Yeah, we saw them the in, the, uh, in the the flashback, but not in oh, the... We saw them in the flashback, but I was just really hoping to see them again to show Earth, this is what you face again. Yeah. yeah. Plus, it would be a nice way to shove it in the Wakanda's face. Hey, you know how you miss the, these things the last time, <laughs> fuck faces? Uh, no, no, I'm not over that. So Look, I'm not against action scenes. Yeah. I'm against idiotic action scenes when there are so many ways to make good action scenes that are smart. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, no. now we skipped over like some plot lines, like, for example, Groot and Rocket and Thor working together to fix a dying star that was also a Cybertron? What? Um, anyways. Anyway, In they... order to make a... Make the Stormbreaker, which is an axe that is a replacement for Mjolnir. And also serves as a Bifrost thing. Yeah. Well, that's cool. They're able Why to do that. Why didn't you make this before? Well. This seems like a thing that would have come in real handy, like, about a dozen times. Like, even if it was just Odin wielding it. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Hey, you think that we should... Hey, fellow dwarf, you think we should maybe give that King of Asgard that Godbreaker weapon that... Stormbreaker weapon that we have the plans for just lying around. You know, help them with their defense tactic with us so that they can protect us easier. Nah, they're doing fine <laughs> with that made in Taiwan shit with the hammer. <laughs> well, I, I, anyway, I, I like the bit of uh, they get the star going and it's like shoots a laser somehow into the forge. And then the iris of metal like closes, the door basically closes because it's broken. And Thor has to hold it up manually, and uh, the dwarf guy's like, you realize what this means? If you uh, hold that open, you'll be bearing the full power of a star. It will kill you. And Thor's like, only if I die. And the guy's like, yes, that's what the word kill means. <laughs> to which I leaned over, and I said to him, 
did we write this movie? Yeah. <laughs> It was. It was. It seems like we wrote this movie. There were moments like that which were funny, and then I was glad there were other moments that took themselves seriously. Gamora's death, obviously, for one, but also where Tony briefly says to Peter, he like knights him on both shoulders and says, "All right, you're an Avenger now." And Peter's like, "Oh wow!" He has this little moment, just this quiet moment, and they don't undercut that with a joke. And I was like, "Thank you." Once in a while, something is serious, so that way the other times can be funny. Okay, so while. We, we skipped over the entire plot line of what Tony and Peter were doing. They're on the donut ship. Yep. They've killed off uh, uh, Ebony, Ebony Maw. Maw. And they crash land on Titan because it turns out that spaceships are not taught uh, in piloting school. Yeah. Um, uh, and so then they go looking around Titan to try to find stuff. And the remaining... they find Thanos and catch him off guard and kill but him. But that's somewhere. when Peter... Mantis and Drax show up thinking that these are servants of Thanos. And thank goodness nobody manages to kill anyone else in the ensuing brawl. That would have been really tragic. Well, yeah, that would have been bad. And they, they eventually, they eventually realize out. what's going on and they start making plans. Okay, Thanos is going to come here, which they know. Oh, yeah, because he's got the Infinity the infinity Stones here. Um, uh, Wait, does Thanos have the Infinity Stones here? He no, has them with him. No, no. Strange has it in oh, the Eye Strange of Strange has his, yeah. So Thanos eventually comes after killing Gamora, and they manage a pretty good fight scene. Yeah. Yeah, they're fighting Thanos, and it's going well. And they come up with the idea of, hey, if we just stop that fist of his from making a fist, he can't use the stones. And I was like, yeah, which oh, I hadn't true. thought of that tactic. That is a logical oh, that's, weakness. That's cool. And eventually they do manage to get it so that everyone is tugging on Thanos one way, and some people are pulling on the Infinity Gauntlet. They get it off of him. Uh, barely. Yeah, he, he manages to grab yeah, it at the last yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. But he manages to get it off, and then Star-Lord shows up and fucks it all up! In a way that was completely believable. Oh, it was believable. Yeah. I'm just saying, it was believable. Yeah. It is within his character. Yeah. It is entirely something he would do that doesn't stop the fact that it fucks it up for everyone. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> he, so he, he asks, what, where, what did you do with Gamora? And eventually gets the truth out of him that he killed Gamora. And Mantis is, like, on top of Thanos' head at this point, putting him, like, halfway to sleep, because that's all she can manage. So, Star-Lord gets so pissed off that Gamora's dead, he starts punching Thanos in the face, which wakes him up all the way, and then he gets his gauntlet back, and like, ah, damn it. It is at this point that Thanos decides, fuck this, I am done with you assholes. And then he blows up a moon and starts raining the pieces down on the combat. Yeah. At which point, I think it's safe to say... Okay, this guy might be out of your weight class. Yeah. <laughs> and they do a whole bunch more fighting. There's another lice line in there where, like, Iron Man tries a dozen moves on him and finally gets a drop of blood. And Thanos is like, all that for a drop of blood. And you're like, yeah, this is a really hard fight. Yeah. Uh, eventually, Tony gets stabbed in the side with his own sword that he made yeah, out his, of nanites. His, yeah. And it looks like he's going to die, except that earlier in the story uh dr strange said oh okay i looked through all the potential futures well okay 14 million and five or something like that 14 million 605 i believe yeah potential futures and in only one of them do we succeed uh well he implies later on that this was all going to plan which wow this is a dark plan uh but in order to save tony's life he gives thanos the time stone which really screws things up later because back on Earth, uh, Princess Shuri of Wakanda has been doing this complicated process. It's called brain surgery. Brain surgery to remove the Infinity Stone from Vision's head. Although she had a line that I wasn't really fond of where she just sees all the connections to the Infinity Stone in Vision's brain. And she's like, oh, why didn't you build him? D -d 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 it just makes Bruce Banner look like an idiot when... Look, I guess she's smart, but... Mm. You know, well, I mean, Bruce isn't a neuroscientist, though. Neither is she, frankly. Yeah, but no, it, no the, don't... The, the, the idea of the plot, though, is we had to go to Wakanda because Bruce couldn't do this on his own. So they had to, like, justify that somehow. Yeah, but at the same time, it can come across a little bit as, um... Uh, let's put down the old characters in favor of showing how awesome the new characters mm -hmm. are. I can understand that. A little bit of a wharf effect, especially since... He can't transform into the Hulk in this one. Yeah. 
Uh, but he gets to pilot the Hulkbuster armor. That was which fun. is which is cool. I I, I like that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, while Shuri was busy, you know, picking apart the literally trillions of connections in Vision's brain to the Infinity Stone, um, one of the dudes, one of the Thanos oh, children, children guys, yeah. sneaks in, kills a bunch of guards, and um, tackles Vision out the window. Was that was that um was that Black Panther's? No, wait, no, no, no. That was okay. Never mind. Sorry, thinking of a different character. Yeah, Vision tackles him out the window, which I didn't get that that was Vision. I thought it was yeah, like one of the I red was, clad yeah, guards. Yeah, I was that they a little had. confused at first too, but then I figured it out. Because I thought, oh, you know, maybe Vision should stay where he is so Shuri can continue the brain surgery, mm-hmm. so he can get rid of the stone. Mm-hmm. But no, this apparently leads into this forested area where they fight and they fight and they fight and the fight, fight continues and, and it, it continues. Uh, then you for- know, before we get around to the the because we're getting close to the end here, uh, shall we talk about Thanos' stated motivations? Because he, he had a speech about that during just uh, before the was big like fight. One more scene. One more scene. You want Okay. 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 So when we do did that scene where he said, "This will kill you only if I die." Yeah, that's what kill means. It's in order to create this axe. Which Groot, Teen Groot, uh, finishes yeah. forging and makes the handle out of his own arm, Woo. which he then regrows. But still, it's an awesome moment. Yeah. Thor takes the hammer along with Groot. Oh, it's, a, it's an axe, really. Yeah, sorry. It's an axe. It's an axe. Sorry. He takes the axe along with Groot and Rocket, teleports to the battle on Earth, which how did he know that was going on? It's a good question. Yeah, I would say Heimdall, but Heimdall's dead at this point. Yeah, it's a very good question. Oh, well. There's a reason why Heimdall could accurately target those Bifrost thingies. Yeah. Frick, you just, maybe he made a dozen other jumps. Is there anything going on here? Nope, here? No, nope, no. Nope, aha, my big entrance. Yeah, <laughs> slams down, and then he starts owning the enemy army, which yeah. is completely awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, now let's get to Thanos' stated motivation. Um. So, yeah, as I said earlier, he, he literally wants to kill off half the galaxy universe. or half the universe and he's got a few scenes where he discusses this in a little more detail and he seems to think it's truly the humane thing to do which in the very opening scene ebony maw is all like this is redemption dudes that we're killing we're redeeming you by killing you and you're like ah, oh, that's just perverse but like thor uh, that really I, seems I consider to... that usual the usual nihilistic religious bullcrap well, yeah. yeah. I mean, how many religious cults have we seen in science fiction and fantasy whose sole motivation revolves around murder everybody because it's for the greater good? Right. And well, you'll the... be better off once I've planted my axe 13 <laughs> inches into your skull. Right, right, right. But the, the idea is that, that Thanos later follows it up with a little more detail. Yeah. And on his planet, Titan, they had a terrible overpopulation program problem. Yeah, they don't and... have a program of overpopulation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, we're people. down to eight people per square meter. We can get that up to pen, ten people. Um, so Thanos proposed murdering half the population purely at random. It's fair to rich and poor alike, he says. Which uh, should surprise absolutely no one who actually is sane. No, this is a terrible idea because it involves murdering half the population. Yeah. Instead uh, of, you know, anything so else. So they said no. I'm just interested to know what steps Thanos went on this journey. Like, he did, there were other things. We could build space stations or space habitats. We could, I don't know. Um, well, like, we, could, we could start colonies on other worlds. Here's one that Sonic and I came up yeah. with. We could do uh, reproduction control. <laughs> You know, yeah. start a program to say, maybe have less kids. You could, yeah, if everyone just had fewer kids, it should work out fine. Uh, you know, just, just maybe less kids. Nope. Omnicide. <laughs> well, half ha- omnicide. Half <laughs> That's the plan for me, Thanos of Titan. Clearly, this is the only plan that makes a modicum of sense. Yeah. I am a genius. And that was the weird little kink in the... The thing, because they're they're trying to make it that he's obviously the villain and he goes too far, but he's got like reasons for what he does, and he's a man with a a mission, and he really believes in it, and he thinks it'll make the universe a better place. And you're like, that's really interesting that you're going that angle with a villain, 
and incidentally, have you heard of contraception? Because I think that would solve Look, every problem you have here. And I was, I was saying... Yes, overpopulation is a problem even in the real world. Yes, overpopulation is a thing. And yes, contraception programs would help. Oh. Now, I'm, we're going to piss off like a bunch of diehard Catholics. Who, <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm uh, not being mean uh, to the Catholics. Like one of the stated things. Of that I I've know. Heard they're told that contraception is a sin. Yeah, but, you know, maybe? Honestly, most Catholics use it anyway. Like, the urge to use contraception is apparently felt across all religions and cultures. It's really interesting. Yeah, look, just use contraception. Don't have kids unless you absolutely want to. Right. You are absolutely sure that this is what you're going to do. So, yeah, the, the one way I could have made this work is to borrow something out of Gurren Lagann, which is a great way to fix any problem. Well, yes. Um, but in Gurren Lagann, the, it was explained that basically all sapient creatures, if, except the anti-spirals. No, anyway, they were spirals too. Oh, they were spirals too. Okay, fine. Yeah, so, they all, they okay, deliberately right. said they halted their own evolution okay, so that they okay. wouldn't do it. The point is all sapient creatures have this thing called spiral energy, and if you get too much of it, apparently it dooms the universe. Okay. And it was like, okay, so if you could tell me that we're already in the red zone on population in a weird cosmic way, and, like, if we don't get rid of lots of people by this specific date, then the universe explodes because weird cosmic energy or something, then contraception ain't going to fix it. And then I could understand Thanos more. But they didn't do any of that. It was just like, overpopulation's a problem. And you're like, yeah, actually, here on Earth, we're okay. Like, you know, we don't Okay, need... we are having, like, some problems. Yeah, some, yeah but not, like, you know... An urgent fix it today thing well like, i mean global warming well that's not the problem he's trying to solve yeah he, he <laughs> seems to be addressing this one problem like well it looks like a basement's flooded my solution dig a deeper basement <laughs> okay thanos i'm going to just stop you right there yeah. <laughs> because technically well yes the water will be further away from me upstairs you're not solving the root problem <laughs> So what, are you going to do this like every hundred years or so? Did you make yourself immortal and you're just planning to just keep snapping your fingers? I guess. It, it, it seems annoying. I wonder how long it would take for the population to double. How long would it take for the population to rise up and murder this bastard? Well, he's got six infinity stones. Yeah, fair point. Okay, so it's at this point that having five of the six infinity stones, Thanos comes to Earth. And he walks through the Avengers. Yeah. Like, with no problems. Yeah. He fuses the Hulkbuster armor inside of rock. rock. Hey, wait a second. The Hulkbuster armor came out later, and it was fine. Did the whole armor come out later? Or yes. Did... Oh. It's got a really good repair system. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> how the fuck did Tony fix fuse to rock <laughs> at molecular level? Yeah, no, and Tony wasn't even there. Yeah. I mean, I could buy the nanotech armor suits, but yeah. Damn, man. Just damn. Yeah. Um, so he's he walking so through the Avengers. Buried, you'd think that maybe Thanos would mercy kill Banner at that point because he would be half buried in the rock. Mm. That would be mercy killing at that point. That's dark. Anyway. Yeah, and this then movie then... ends dark because, okay, so Wanda, because she has magical... I can shatter an infinity gem thing powers. Uh, kills the man she loves by, well, baking, basically making his head explode. By breaking the infinity stone. Which, again, this thing is like a cosmic concentration of energy. Shouldn't the explosion, like, knock the Earth out of orbit into the sun or something? Apparently not. Um, or knock everyone's minds out of orbit since it's the mind stone. Maybe we're all, this is all a dream. You know? Okay. Whatever. Anyway, so, and we're all like, yay, the universe is saved. All it happened was, all that we had to do was kill a shitload of people. Well, mostly kill Vision. Yeah, mostly kill Vision. Yay. So Thanos actually gives like another humanizing moment. He's like, I know how you feel today. I have lost many things as well. Yeah, it makes I, me wonder if, like, he was friends with the children of Thanos. I mean, it doesn't seem wait, like that's a sort of relationship, but, like, if, he said he lost Black Ebony Maw, yeah. and he was, like, sad for that. Well, he was mostly sad for losing Gamora. Actually, the double meaning I thought from his de declaration of sadness was, A, 
he's sad for losing Gamora, which he canonically is, and B, he's sad that he's failed in his mission. He lost his, his, his quest. But then, oh wait, meaning two becomes false three seconds later because he uses the time stone in to the exact un- same way that uh, that Doctor Strange did when he wanted to make a bargain with Dormammu. Um, and he undoes the Vision's head explosion, then rips it out. Yup. Rips the Infinity Stone right from her skull. And he's got his skull. His skull. I said his. <laughs> And he's got all okay, six... technically it's because he's technically a robot. But everyone refers to it as he, so... Yeah, he... but, you know, it's... You, you gotta do that, otherwise people get upset. Guy, if he... You know what? I'm not gonna engage. I'm not <laughs> engaging! I'm not engaging, you bastards! <laughs> Point is, he's got all six gems, and you're like, oh, crap, what's gonna happen now? And then Thor hits him with the Stormbreaker. Right in the chest, and you think, oh, thank God, things are gonna turn out okay! And this is where we see that Avengers Infinity War should have had the tagline, Hope is a lie. Hope <laughs> is a filthy fucking lie. Because Thanos' next words to Thor are, You should have aimed for the head. Yeah. <laughs> then he snaps his fingers. Remember that this whole movie is saying he could destroy half the life in the universe with a snap of his fingers once he has all six gems. He has all six gems. He snapped his fingers. And warps away, and for a while you're like, not sure if anything's happening, and then Bucky like disappears into this he, weird. He, he turns, he disintegrates to dust. Yeah, and for a second there, I thought, was that like an illusion of Bucky that is now unillusioning itself because Reality Gem is no longer on the premises? And then, oh no, wait, he's actually dead, and all sorts of people die. Like, like the the awesome gorilla people start disintegrating, except for one guy, which I was just like. God damn it! <laughs> that one guy's just gonna be like, motherfucker. <laughs> um, Black Panther died, which Black I was Panther, not expecting he disintegrates. at all. Yeah, yeah, but his like, was that his girlfriend or his mom there huh? that was with him? Um, that is actually his someone else's girlfriend, like Captain of the Guard person. I thought was there. Oh, okay, the Captain of the Guard person. Yeah. What happened to his mom and his girlfriend? Uh, were they shown at all? I don't think they were. Oh. You know, I don't want to fall into the stereotype of, you know... Yeah. yeah. You know, black people look the same to white people, but <laughs> like I've said before, a lot of people look the same to me. So that's why I'm so grateful when there's different body types. Yeah. And I mean literally different body types. Like, I'm grateful like when Rocket... Like Ra- Xenomorph. No. <laughs> yeah, or I was going to say Rocket, Raccoon, and Thor are on the yeah, same, in the yeah. same shot, because I'm like, oh, thank God, I can tell <laughs> these characters apart. Okay. Thor's the furry one, right? <laughs> Um, Thorkit Raccoon. That's mm. a weird idea. Thor the Raccoon. I would pay money for that. <laughs> but anyway, all the Guardians. Thor versus Squirrel Girl. No, Thanos versus Squirrel Girl. Oh, That's gonna be the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one hero with enough power. Carol's. I mean, Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I like Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Moving on. So all the guardians except Rocket die. Yeah. Um, like people start disappearing all over the Peter universe. Peter Parker dies. That was um, so sad. He holds on longer than most. And like, that, that okay, that was a little um, iffy of a scene to me because he's like crying, going, "I don't want to go. Don't let them take me." What's wrong Tony? With that? Well, it just that everyone else disappeared in, like, a second, and Peter was, like, hanging on. Yeah. And it's like, okay, why are the rules different for you? Because the evil spell hadn't quite gotten to him yet? I don't know. I don't know. It, it disintegrated everyone else equally and in, just as instantly. I'm, well, I'm not even, against even, the Even on Wakanda, from... you saw, like, that guy's disintegrating, and then that guy, and then that guy later in the shot. Like, it was not literally well, instant with everyone. Yeah, but... Uh, so, so Peter got but it lucky. wasn't like everyone disappeared at the same time. It's just that everyone seemed to disintegrate at roughly the same speed. Oh. Peter starts to disintegrate, but then it takes a while for him just so he can get this really dramatic scene. And don't get me wrong. It's a good scene looking at it from the point of acting and yeah. how the characters interact. Well, that's what I cared about. My problem is that it doesn't make sense with the rules of how everyone else disintegrated. Mm. I suppose not. Which, okay, I get it. Uh, I get why you can like the scene, but I, I just still have the problem with the scene because it feels like it just hung on. He hung on for the sake of drama, and 
look, I, 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 I've made my point. You've made yours. Yeah. yeah, people start disintegrating. Half of everyone in the universe is dead at the end of this movie. Wow. None yeah. of the primary Avengers died, though. Yeah. I mean, we don't know about Hawkeye, uh, yeah. but, but I'm going to assume he's okay, just on the basis of marketing. Yeah, maybe. Um, and then in the anyway, that was that was that was really bold. When I got to yeah. I was like, wow, you actually the villain actually won, and he then you see his Thanos thing. watching the sunrise over presumably Titan that's been fixed up. Maybe he's just this has been his passion project for like the last five hundred years or however long he's been doing this. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's he's a, he could just be a completely different vacation planet, but i assumed it was i mean no, I, didn't, I didn't really assume where why it is was. it only sentient life that we see disintegrating because he's i mean if it's half of all the life in the universe yeah. i'd like to see some trees disappear yeah i mean you know it would I be mean to the trees but like we don't see any dogs we don't see any squirrels we don't see any belugas we don't see any <laughs> uh, just imagine like Peter Parker dies, and the Guardians die, and T'Challa dies, and then we just cut to a beluga. <laughs> just to, like, make you happy. It just says at the bottom, this is for you, Sith King. <laughs> and then, like, a shark, like, bites where the beluga was, and it's like, the hell, man? <laughs> it's all sad. The shark's sad. And then the shark disintegrates. No. <laughs> well, he didn't, wasn't sad for long. Uh, and Groot dies. Groot Fucking dies. Groot. And it's like, Really? One thing that does bug me about this scene, aside from the fact that there's a downer ending and I hate downer endings, wow. because let's be fair, watching the news for five minutes will make you put you into a depressive spiral. Mm. Let's be fair. Mm. But, Bucky. They, uh, I mentioned this to, to Sonic Sons earlier, but they hyped up his return. They showed him on the poster. They gave him back the arm. They they had him in spo- in the what's the thing after the stingers uh, where he was like getting better and like just moving forwards and then he's here he shoots some people and he dies i mean i am i discussed this with the sonic Sons. it feels like a waste of the character here's how i would have done it have cap disintegrate especially since he no longer has his iconic shields yeah um instead he has these night looking things that looks really silly mm. and have bucky have to step up and try to fill Captain America's shoes. Yeah. And then you could have him wrestling with self-doubt because the last time he was in close proximity to these people, he tried to kill a lot of them. Um, he's wrestling with his guilt still because, you know, just because you're doing fine while you're in the middle of Wakanda uh, helping with cows doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing great when you're going back to the area with all of the old stressors of your life. Mm-hmm. Just... Have it yeah. set him up for a character arc in the next film, especially since uh, Chris was it Evans? Yeah, Chris uh, Evans has stated that he doesn't really want to continue doing Captain America much. Well, it's movie. possible that you're going to get your wish in the second film, and that by the end of that film is when Cap dies, and then Bucky takes over his job. Yeah, but Bucky died here, so I know. Well, I presume they're going to do some cosmic thingamajig to bring people back from the dead in film two. Yeah, it'd be really bold if they left them all dead, like Groot and everybody. Wow. Um, well, they have Guardians of the Galaxy three, Volume three, as like a confirmed film. So I'm guessing they come back, and it would kind of suck if it was just Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> the mo- <laughs> guys, guys at Marvel, I have an idea for a film. <laughs> Rocket Raccoon the movie. Oh Actually, that could be really cool because like we show him visiting half his old planet of Half World. It's called Half World. Yeah, it's called Half World. Oh, okay. Because half of it was like paradise idyllic stuff and the rest was robots oh wow look it's 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 complex but essentially the whole planet was an insane asylum and that was the history that the animal people thought was true but then it turned out it wasn't true at all because of mind wiping and rocket raccoon was like the security chief in charge of it and the animal people were there in order to serve as like comforting presences for the insane asylum patients wow and the robots were there to take care of everything, but then stuff went wrong, and the robot half rebelled, and it's 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 comic book. It's really freaking complicated. Okay. I guess the point I'm trying to make is Squirrel Girl, Rocket <laughs> Raccoon team up. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen, Marvel. We uh, want this. Especially since New Avengers actually used her in an interesting way. Squirrel Girl in an interesting way. Uh, not as like the comic relief 
the character who beats up everyone. But she was the babysitter to, um... Oh, God. Uh, Luke Cage's daughter. Ah. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So what I'm really trying to say is Luke Cage, Rocket <laughs> Raccoon, <laughs> Squirrel Girl, Iron Fist team up. Wow. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Um, but what actually happens in this movie is after the credits, post credit scene, with Nick Fury. And I was just saying, like, during the credits, like, we haven't seen Nick Fury in a while. What's he up to ever since uh, App- Winter Soldier? Apparently he's been on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, really? But I haven't watched that show, so yeah. it doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count either. <laughs> also, I have watched that show. I hated it. So, yeah. I mean, it was okay, but then it just raised so many freaking questions. And it really didn't help that, like, around the time of Age of Ultron... They said, yeah, we don't consider this canon. Oh, boy. Well, the, the guys who made the movie said that. But. Yeah. Anyway, um, Nick Fury is in the car with Maria Hill, and the disintegration starts happening, and then uh, they both disintegrate also. And Maria went away, and I'm like, okay, so it'll be a Nick Fury on his own. And then Nick Fury also disintegrates. And I'm like, what? He would have been perfect for a guy in a post-apocalyptic world, managing resources and getting contacts together with people and that figuring shit out. That is what he out. does. That is literally his job. That is totally, yeah. I would love to see Nick Fury in a post-apocalypse. He would totally n- know how to do stuff. He would. Uh, Although I do have a question about this, two questions about this scene. One, it, the very end implies that he was trying to contact... Um, Captain Marvel. Uh, no, no, Carol Danvers, a.k.a. like one of the Captain Marvel girls. Well, yeah, the, we just saw the insignia of Captain Marvel, and apparently Carol Danvers is the current Captain Marvel. So, there you go. Yeah, um, so, one, why are you sending her a message? Wait, I have another problem with that scene. Why are you sending her a message? I have to warn her that everyone is disintegrating. Do you think <laughs> she's going to miss that? <laughs> well, maybe okay, he Okay, there's two options here. She either doesn't notice, in which case you... Okay, several options. First, she doesn't notice, in which case she's not the superhero you want. Like, Deadpool, I could buy him not noticing half the planet is disintegrating. <laughs> hey! I don't care what you're, that you're melting before my eyes. I want my chimichanga! Yeah. Isn't that right, Sith King and Sonic Sons? Oh, God, he's aware! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two, she notices, in which case you don't need to contact her. Because she notices that everyone is dying, or three, she's dead from this disintegration wave thing. Well, okay. The... So in none of those circumstances would you want to contact her. She would know, or be dead, or not matter. <laughs> um, how about she's alive, but he just wants to have a discussion with her about next steps. Yeah, but he w- he noticed he started disintegrating, and then he reached for the signal. No, well, he first says to Maria... Oh, wow, code red, we gotta call it in. And he goes to fishes for his pocket. And then he starts disintegrating, and he, like, finishes clicking the button. Okay, but if he's disintegrating, why does he click the button if he wants to talk to her? Because he's hoping to... My (laughs) dust will communicate! (laughs) As long as she has a Ouija board! (laughs) I would love if that was his plan. Yes! He's already hacked up a Ouija board system. So you can talk to this people. This emergency after. Ouija board will allow you to communicate with me, Miss Marvel. And what will his first word be? Because as he was disintegrating, he was just like, Mother! and then stops. And the okay. Ouija board just spells out the rest of it. Yes. <laughs> I've heard good things about Kamala, the new Miss Marvel. The, yeah. Her name's Kamala Khan, and she's Muslim. Oh, that's right. I heard about that a while is, ago. Like, she's apparently a young girl and, well, like, kind of teenage girl. But, like, she's done in a quirky and interesting way. Okay. Like, for example, she can't eat beef, but she will sit inside the local 7-Eleven and smell the hot dogs cooking because it smells so damn good. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. the, the other problem I have with this scene, there's a helicopter that crashes, presumably because the pilot's disintegrated. But my problem was, as it was going down, it was already smoking. What was the... Why was it smoking? I don't know. I mean, that, I mean this, this is somehow? a thing that happens in a lot of fiction where a helicopter's going down even though it has no reason to be on fire. It's already on fire! <laughs> like, what, is there a button that you have to sit on to prevent it for a helicopter from bursting into flames? Is that a thing? He's got to self-destruct. <laughs> Remember, don't get out of the cockpit or everyone dies in fire. Okay. 
This is a stupid design for a helicopter. Yeah. It's a stupid design for anything. This couch has a, <laughs> has a set everything on fire button. Yeah. So, what is the takeaway from this? I thought it was fun comic book extravaganza. It was everything that we've been waiting for for the yeah, last it was 10 cool years. Stuff, you know. And remember how I mentioned I wouldn't mention the Infinity Gauntlet comic until I finished? Until we finished? Yeah. Yeah. First thing that Thanos does. Well, first step in his comic journey was Infinity Quest, which was folded into this movie, where Thanos goes around collecting the Infinity stones from people like the Grandmaster and the Collector. Uh, but then the Infinity Gauntlet saga starts with him killing half of everyone in the universe. That's where it starts, so I knew it would end that way. I had no idea it was going to end that way, so it was much more surprising yeah. to me. If you want a better examination of it than the four-line summary that I gave, Linkara has it because... Linkara. Because he's Linkara. And we love him. Yeah. It was a great movie, but God did it end on a downer ending. Personally, I'm okay with that because I, I was expecting it was they beat him, but he'll be back for revenge in the sequel, and he just comes back for revenge. This is like, no, he actually did the thing, and then you think about it, you're like, okay, they're probably just going to resurrect everybody with timeline shenanigans or something. Uh, but that was, that was bold. And then there's the villain at the end just watching the sunrise and like, yep. I did what I came to do. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's something I never thought I'd see in pretty much any superhero film. Yeah, watching everyone disintegrate, though, that was kind of horrifying. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be. I mean, I was kind of thinking that they would just look around and everyone's gone. No, no, they had to give you a visual of it. I would. Did they, though? Well, they... Did they? <laughs> I thought did it was they, thematically though? appropriate. Did they? Also, it reminded me of how Pyrrha died in Ruby, so that that was fun. Being reminded of that. Yeah. Um, that'd be yeah. Fun. That'd be fun if Ruby, that happened to Ruby, and, like, Cinder's about to disintegrate Pyrrha, and then <laughs> Cinder disintegrates. And Pyrrha's like, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Can I go? No. Uh, well, okay, well, I guess fun isn't the right word for half of the universe dying. <laughs> yeah. Although I guess this is also why death it, Originally death killed half the universe As an offering Thanos killed half the universe as an offering to death Which is anthropomorphized in the Marvel universe And Thanos is in love with her mm -hmm. In fact that's one of the backstories of Deadpool That Deadpool was also in love with death mm -hmm. But then Thanos used the infinity gauntlet To make Deadpool immortal So that he'd never meet death Because mm -hmm. Thanos is kind of a psycho <laughs> Um Yeah So he's Starts, where did I, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I forget. Never okay. mind. Uh, um. Oh, I remember where I was going with this thing. Okay. Okay, this is why he's not impressing death in this, he's not trying to impress death in this film, because here's what would happen. Death, I have killed half of everything in the universe. You have any idea how much work you've just made for me? <laughs> I have to file where everyone goes now, God Damn it! Yeah, you yeah. motherfucker, Thanos! I had a day off tomorrow, and now that's wasted. Thank you so much. <laughs> Meanwhile, God and everyone else is like, "What the hell? Heaven just got full." <laughs> Satan's like, "Hell just got more full." Double full, yeah. <laughs> yep. They're, uh, ironically, you causing an overpopulation problem, yeah. which leads You're to gonna a fucking fix this, Thanos. <laughs> which leads to a heavenly Thanos. An analog who has to send everyone back down to Earth to fix the overpopulation, <laughs> and they just go back and forth forever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go see this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's good. You got, you have said, to know of the Marvel universe already. You cannot just yeah, jump okay, into this. So at bare minimum, you're gonna need to see Age of Ultron. No, don't see Age of Ultron. Well, oh, that's where Vision is, origin is. Dang it. Yeah, so basically, if it's a Marvel Cinematic Movie since the Avengers, actually, you know, since the first Captain America movie, you should watch it then. Yeah, that should that should cover everything yeah, boy. nicely. Yeah, that shouldn't take you more than a weekend yeah, boy. or two. So assuming you don't need eating or sleeping or bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. 
I like that they managed to get so much narrative depth within the giant, you know, explodey combat stuff. Um, I've seen other movies with greater depth than this, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, off the top of my head, just in the superhero world, I'm thinking I, I gotta rank um, The Dark Knight higher than this, actually. Well, The Dark Knight is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's... Ooh, Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw the Nostalgia Critics review of it. Yeah. But he, he openly proclaimed, yeah, this is like his most Batman y film. Yeah. That's definitely got the Batman uh, ethos all over it. Plus Kevin Conroy, so. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Mm. Yeah, but for what they were trying to work with, they did it well. They basically they did, they did well. what they were here to do, you know. It's just it's like the first Avengers, but bigger. Plus we got to see Wakandans die, so, you know. <laughs> Fuck Wakanda! <laughs> uh, we they didn't... deserve to die of their own fucking stupidity! <laughs> I'm sorry, am I still mad? Yes. I know this. Yes, yeah. I am still mad. Yeah. Anyway, it's good. We'll see what they do in the next movie, which will be like the end of... Phase 3. Well, the end of Phase 3, but like these three, like the end of the Phase trilogy in a sense, because so many of the actors are leaving. I hear they're going to do big shakeups. Uh, and I hear Miss Marvel, or Captain Marvel, we're calling her now, is going to be one of the, the big new leads. Like, apparently, some of these other characters will retire or die or something. So some people might actually die and stay dead. Like, Tony might actually die and stay dead at the end in the next movie. Or Steve Rogers or somebody. That's entirely plausible. Yeah, especially since, as I mentioned, some of them are starting to say, yeah, I'd like to leave. Yeah, I don't blame them after ten years. You know? I still want them to stay around, but that's me saying I want to. I don't want to see Iron Man or Captain America or or Bruce Banner. I don't want to see them go. Yeah, these movies had such a big impact that yeah. you know. But they may need to rest the characters for a while before they eventually you know reboot them in some other form. Okay, they will reboot them, but but you know Robert Downey Jr. will always be my Tony Stark. Yeah, um, Chris. Evans? <laughs> yes. Evans will always be my Captain America. Yeah. Mark Hamill will always be my Joker. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Conroy will always be my Batman. They mentioned Kevin Bacon at one point in this movie. They're the smartest heroes. Like Kevin Bacon? Yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> and of course, when the Guardians first show up on screen, they're playing like classic rock music. Yeah. And of course, you know, they, they, they have uh, pop culture spewing Spider Man talking to Star Lord. Wait, yeah. Footloose? Is it still the greatest movie ever made? It never was. <laughs> he just looks at him. <laughs> I fully expected Peter to be dead in the next few seconds when he said that. <laughs> the younger Peter, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Fun. Superhero extravaganza thing with a surprisingly interesting villain and good character moments. Yeah, nice. I'd say a nice twist at the end, but we, we just spoiled it and just spent, like, what, 20 minutes talking about it. Yeah, well. If you watch us it's and a, are it, surprised by spoilers... It's a nice culmination of everything that came before. Yeah. And Kevin Bacon was in it. No, it was not in it. <laughs> it was not in it! I know, I know. <laughs> and Stan Lee was in it, though. Stan Lee was. And I'd like to think of Stan Lee survived the uh, half aside... And he'll be back to save the universe somehow. Stan Lee with the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, just imagine that. Someone once posted, imagine um, uh, like different. If Stan Lee dies in real life, yeah, uh, he, all the Marvel Cinematic Universe characters are going like, well, you know, I, I'm sorry, guys, I have to go. I my my friend who's a postman, or my friend who's a bus driver, they died, <laughs> and they all show up to the same funeral. They're like. What the <laughs> hell? What sorcery be this? You know, I hear they actually filmed all of Stan Lee's cameos in advance now, specifically because he might pass away. He is, you know, old. He's old and he has, like, tuberculosis or something. No, he's, like, he's... sick. Yeah. Well, good luck, Stan Lee. Getting better and everything. I mean, he's, like, 90s, so, you know. Good Here's luck hoping anyway. you get older than my grandma, who's yeah. 102 at this point. Oh, wow. Yeah. Great grandma, actually. Wow. Okay, so I think we're done. Yeah, okay. So, we're looking forward to Infinity Gauntlet War. Double Infinity War. Whatever the <laughs> sequel of, to this movie is. We're Infinity looking forward and Beyond to War. Buzz Lightyear shows up. No. No, 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 no. 
Rom Space Knight yes! shows up. Yes! Rom Space Knight. Rom movie. Guys, Rom movie. Rom Space Knight movie. I could do that. Oh my god. The Dire Wraiths. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, anyways, we're looking forward to whatever comes next. Yeah. Unless it's terrible. In which case, <laughs> we're not looking forward to it. Yeah. Anyways, um, tune in next time for our review of the first episode of DuckTales. Oh, cool. Just keep watching. We're, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm Sith King. I'm Sonic Sons. We're signing off. And just remember, people, like, comment, subscribe, and keep circulating the links.